So in our continued study of chemistry, all that matters, we're going to look at the scientific method. So the scientific method is just a logical, systematic approach to the solution of a scientific problem. Now the thing about it is that this process is not solely for science. Any problem can be approached in this method, whether it's a math problem, a history problem, an art problem. So this is just basic problem solving, no matter what the problem is or what the subject. Now, every book seems to have a different list and the order that this list follows in, but basically the scientific method breaks down into three basic components. Making observations, testing hypotheses, and developing theories or answers from those hypotheses. So we begin by making an observation. Observations lead to questions, questions lead to answers, Tests lead to confirming those answers or denying those answers. So if your flashlight's not, not working, what do you do? Well, is it the batteries or is it the bulb? So if you've got a pile of recyclables around, what do you do with them? What are we going to make from these? If we've got all this recycled material, what can be made from it? You know, if we had a little bike accident, we'd want to make sure that the metals in our bike are the best. So what is the best metal for a bicycle frame or even the, the tire rims? And, you know, with what's going on in the world, and we now are at 7 billion people, 9 billion shortly around the corner, how are we going to feed all the people on the planet? Well, these are all great questions from observations, and the next step would be to see how to come up with some answers. So once you form your questions, you come up with some hypotheses. What are the possible solutions? What are the possible answers? Well, if my flashlight doesn't work, it could be a couple of things. It could be that maybe someone loosened up the flashlight so the connections aren't right. We could test that. Or maybe it's the batteries. Maybe the batteries are dead, so we need to change out the batteries. Maybe it's the bulb. If we tighten it up and then we change the batteries out and it still doesn't work, maybe we need to change the bulb. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this. We're going to try each thing out. So first we're going to tighten them up. Doesn't work. Okay, so we empty out the batteries, put in new batteries, and check to see if it works. Okay, if it still doesn't work, then we know that it's something else. So next thing is to check the bulb. So basically you experiment to test the possible solutions. You, you create a way to see what the possible hypothesis is and how to prove it's true or it's not true. Now, what we're testing are called variables, and there's the independent variable. That's the variable you're going to manipulate, and the dependent variable is going to be the variable that responds. So if we're testing to see if the batteries work, changing the batteries is the independent variable. We're manipulating that. And the dependent variable is whether the flashlight is going to go on or stay off. So our independent variable is the thing we're changing. The dependent variable is the thing that responds to tell us whether we are right or we're wrong. Now sometimes it's kind of impossible to set up an experiment or it's improbable to set up an experiment. So sometimes what we do is we use what are called models. Now some of those models are just taking something that's really small and can't be seen and making a large enough model that we can test the probabilities. But sometimes it's going to a computer and creating simulations to see how things are going to react. So Sometimes we have to use models in the place of actual experimentation just to test things out in a safer way, in a pos positive way to make sure our answers are going to be feasible. Now as you're doing these tests and experiments and you're checking each hypothesis to see if you're right or wrong or what needs to be changed, it's always valuable to keep a record and keep a record of observations, the data, and then analyze along the way not only for yourself but for peers or collaborators that may use your information later or may come up with a way to assist you so you always need to keep clear records and data um, of all these tests and experiments so that you have something to fall back on but also something to validate what you're doing now if your findings are such that they repeat 
where you get the same conclusion each and every time, you begin to form a theory. And a theory is basically a test that's been repeating, repeated enough times that it's accepted. Theories have to be continuously tested though. Theories can become stronger by further testing or sometimes theories need to be modified along the way. Theory of evolution. Why is that just a theory and not a law yet? Because we're still studying evolution. Because we're still finding new things about evolution. It used to be thought from Darwin's original theory that evolution took place over a long period of time. But we now understand that e that evolution can take place in just a matter of a couple generations. So the theory is still out, but we're pretty accurate on evolution. We just have to make sure that we get it all right. Now when a test is repeated enough that the conclusions do not get manipulated in any way, no change is going to come about, then that theory becomes scientific law as the law of gravity. There's no way around it. If you trip, you're going to fall. Why? Because gravity. Gravity's not going to disappear. Gravity doesn't change. Gravity is constant. And therefore, that's a scientific law. Now, science does not occur in a vacuum. There are very few people that do their work as an individual. And in today's world, more and more as the technology comes in and we are collaborating all over the world, we need to understand that we need to be able to communicate and collaborate in a vast, vast variety of ways. You have to com communicate through the computer. You have to cre collaborate and communicate verbally. You have to be able to present material in a variety of ways. You have to be able to publish your work and share your findings. So this idea of collaboration and communication is key to scientific success.